So one of the problems, or let's say one of the roots of the problem of business management, like you as an owner managing your business, I'm not going to blame it on technology because the technology works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it in a different way because this affects everybody that owns a business or operates inside a business as an owner and an operator. And it's a knowledge limitation. And I experience it every day as well, right? I would say my, the thing that I do is I don't stop learning about what I can change. So if, I, if there's some application, like a SaaS product out there, I need to know it. You know, not all of it, but if it's if applied to my business, I need to know as best I can. And that's why what we're going to talk about today, which is, and this goes back before cloud. This goes back before the software as a service, like before these ideas. We're just talking like general computer use and applications. Whatever version of the first wave of technology was for you and your business, this applies too. All right, so this is day five. And I'm going to put the word up. Pro proficiency. All right. The proficiency is basically your knowledge, right? Your ability to know about how something works, like how proficient are you, right? I won't even go like, don't worry about definitions if, if you have dictionary.com, <laughs> which I don't right now, but I'm going to explain modern proficiency. Okay which is a lot different. Modern proficiency means you have an advanced or expert understanding of all of the technology. Okay? This is where it gets crazy. On average, and I'm going to use Microsoft again because they're just so easy to throw under the bus, but <laughs> Word and Excel, on average, the majority of business owners that have been using it every day for the past 20 years have a general proficiency in it, okay? And I'm talking like, that's like half, max half of the proficiency you could have in those apps, okay? Max half. There are very, very, very few people out there that know, are, like are expert, mo like a modern proficiency equals expert in Word and Excel. Because there's so much, there's so much. It's like, it's a ma each one of those applications is massive, but the things that you'll stop are what you don't think you need anymore. It's just like setting up your phone. It's just like configuring your television. It's just like anything. It's like unboxing your router. It's like everything has like a default and then there's advanced and there's expert, okay? And here's the thing. Just, to, we're gonna go back in time, back and forward so you can see how much time is wasted in performance, right? Because if you didn't know these things existed inside the device or the software, and for how long have you not been an advanced or expert user in that software? And this is the problem when I say that, is someone will defend themselves as if they are an advanced or expert. But this is the thing. We're talking about modern proficiency in your business, right? And so you do not have to have absolute expert modern proficiency in your ecosystem, all your SaaS products and your app stack, etc. That's why you have other people. But just acknowledge that you're not advanced or expert in, say, QuickBooks Online, or Xero, or Salesforce, or Pipedrive, or HubSpot, or Zapier, or Microsoft Teams, or Slack, 
or anything, okay? Just acknowledge that. And then imagine when you put together this Franken system, and that's what we call a bunch of SaaS products that are just registered and connected, maybe, and not fully utilized. Like, basically less than beginner in each one of those application environments that each has a responsibility connected to a corporate area of your business. You see where I'm, you see where I'm going with this, right? So you just got to acknowledge that, that you do not have advanced or expert proficient, modern proficiency in your entire ecosystem. And if you, so now that, that's like, I'm identifying that as a problem right now. So now you can like change, to, you got to like get a consultant in there or like remote departments, that's where it came from. That's where, I'll get there, right? But that's where remote departments came from is because when you do an interview with a business owner, even if they were a startup five years ago and they started using like the digital SaaS products that I would consider popular, like the pop biz SaaS, right? Whatever that ecosystem, that Franken system, Franken system ecosystem they created, whatever that is, like they weren't wrong in the brand choices. They have a pretty good app stack, but even five years ago, still a beginner modern proficiency in each of the SaaS products, which means e even if they were using them, they're working too hard. So for how long were they working too hard? How much information were they losing? How much performance was lost, you know? And how much time did they waste doing 10% of what 100% could have, could, like they, they're missing 90% of some sort of output. Something that it could have done, you're not doing, right? And it usually has to do with like automated workflow or connecting to something, manipulating data from somewhere else, comparing, you know, depositing, whatever, push, pull, that kind of stuff. The reason why they exist, and remember, I always say the SaaS products, each one of them independently, they have their own scope. They have their own, you know, projection into the future, right? And so what they're doing is they're all trying to just make each other, like, they want to win by like eliminating every responsibility that's human as possible because that's what you'll pay for. That's what I'll pay for. But that's the expert and the advanced. I will say somewhat that it's becoming more generalized that like auto flow and workflow and marketplace and all these and the, all this automation and the ins automatic technology has inside it is getting more generalized so like just even using the software you're getting most of those algorithms by default but not only is it the proficiency the problem it's actually using the product properly all the time right? Like it does require maintenance, supervision. It requires some sort of human interaction, which is what happens is that you, if it's not doing what it should be doing, in other words, you're like, say you're using MailChimp and you've been using it for like five years and there's, a, there's an advanced level and an expert level of how to use that product for email campaigns and campaign management for email. And what happens is it breaks down because you get, it's either you don't like doing it, you get bored, or it's not showing the results you think that you're paying for for it. And here's where, they, where it goes crazy sour is you won't cancel it because you know you need it, but you just don't use it. So you just pay for it every month and it sits there and does nothing and it collects dust, right? <laughs> That's why this unsupervised Franken system, that's why it, like people, they... they you invest in these SaaS products thinking they're going to solve a problem. That's, that's why I, the marketing of SaaS software as a service um, bothers me. Because they, they, they independently don't solve all the business's problems. Together, they can be extraordinarily powerful. That's how you weaponize your business is when you use all the integrations and automation. Like I always say, as much as possible. Right? But... Each of their advertising is for what the purpose that the owner knows that they need, but it's like the amount of time and how proficient they have to be in each one of these applications is a st like um, out of that, out, out of their league. It's out of your league. 
there are a lot of people that can get into that headspace, but it's not many. Like, take it from me. I've interviewed, it feels like thousands of business owners, and even if they're that, even if they were brand specific and they assembled their own app stack themselves, when you look at what they do, when you look at what you do with your tabs in Google Chrome on a daily basis, it's nowhere near what could be being done to achieve time savings and revenue. Like at, at all, like at all, less than beginner. Because what you'll do is you'll gravitate towards whatever technology got you here. You'll, if you, you're gonna mimic, what's gonna happen is you're gonna mimic with the new SaaS product, whatever you were doing with the previous technology, you're gonna try to mimic it, even though it's a totally different animal. Like it was built like from a, like a time machine in the future in comparison to whatever first wave technology you were using, but you're gonna try to mimic it because your processes don't work in the new one and you're aligned to them. That's your, va your value, like that's your, that's what makes you feel comfortable is your process, your operations, right? So you, you, that's why I always say, let your process die. Let your processes die when you're figuring out a new workflow because the SaaS products do it for you, right? But see that, so that's where it gets, you'll be like, oh, and then you, you know, it won't, you won't win. And that's why I'm doing these things so that everybody can kind of wake up and just realize how much time and money they're wasting. How much potential revenue? Why don't I just say this for every greedy motherfucker out there? The revenue lost is astounding. Is astounding. The revenue lost. Because of the amount of... Like, you already have told your team you're using the SaaS product. Like, a while ago. And it's... But it may have... It's what is your ROI? How... You can't calculate it. We can but you know, I'm just trying to figure that out for you so that you can, uh, it's like I, go, like I go into a crazy psychosis. All right, so here, we're gonna go with just some, I wrote this down, so like, let's say five levels of proficiency, just general proficiency, right? The first one will be like, we'll, I took this off the web. Fundamental awareness. <laughs> I mean, that's funny alone. <laughs> Fundamental. <laughs> Basic knowledge. <laughs> oh yeah. Like it's, it gets better. The more the more I do this, the fun, it's it's just comedy, man. It's comedy. Novice. That's two. Novice. Right. Which would be limit limited experience. Yeah. Whatever. Limited experience. And let's go three. Intermediate, oh yeah, intermediate. And also, so that's like practical application. Four, advanced. Or applied theory. Right? Five, expert. This is my favorite. Expert. And in parentheses here, recognized authority. Oh, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> that's like how you, like, that's how you, <laughs> you have to, that you have to understand that if I'm just throwing the word modern in front of proficiency, and you look at this, and this is for all of the applications in your ecosystem, okay? This is as a whole, and also as a whole, how they interact with each other. You know, I, and if you want to be an expert, you need to know what's going to change inside that application environment before, before, while the new versions are coming out. That, there's that too. Why? Because they'll give you an upper hand. It's competitive, right? Because if there's things coming out that haven't come out yet, and you're just gonna not use them, once again, lost revenue and time. You haven't learned something about why it came out, so there's your competitive advantage that you just squandered. You just squandered your competitive advantage again. So, if you're, if you get what I'm saying, okay, I would say, when you look at it this way, it's very rare to pass into three, four, and five. Okay, very rare. Most, 
And remember, I'm now talking about where your business should be, right? In a completely SaaS ecosystem, an app stack, a tech stack, your Franken system, but we can change that. That's what I'm talking about. Not like just Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Office for some of you, right? I'm talking like the now, <laughs> where your business should be now, right? Now, no, I will add that, of course, there are usefulnesses for you, maybe in certain industries for like Word, Cell, and Outlook, and SharePoint, and stuff like that. I get it, I totally do. That's over here, but even then, you're not expert proficient. <laughs> You just use it like you're driving a car. Like you go from one car to another and you're like, steering wheel, gas, brake, all right, you turn signals, good, we're good to go. Same thing, you know, different shell. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I would say that even the Tesla is very similar to still driving a car, right? But I'm talking like the, when you go out of what you're comfortable in, which is the old first wave technology place you are and you go into the next one, it's like massively, it's like flying in comparison to driving, okay? But the, U the UX will be forgiving. The user experience of the SaaS product will be forgiving. It will be easy to kind of understand. But will you do it all the time and will you become an expert? The answer is no, zero, no, absolutely not. It's, it's extremely rare. The one, people that this becomes, like say they move from here to here and they are here, are probably people that build the startup world, right? They're people that are building these environments and these applications, these SaaS products with tech stacks right now, right? The Silicon Valley of the world. It doesn't have to be in Silicon Valley, but I would say the people that are building the applications or the new environments or the new apps, they're experts. Why? Because like they've been... It's like, they are those people, you know what I mean? But if you're in an industry where you're not that, but you're mimicking startup culture, right? You're still probably fundamental or novice in, in all of the apps that you use. And that's where I'm gonna introduce that whole idea of remote departments, which is like, I mention it all the time. Let's do this together. So I got 17 minutes on the clock. I guess you understand this by now, <laughs> right? Like, oh, I just have to go over it one more time. Basic knowledge, limited experience, practical application, applied theory, and recognized authority. There's so much that, that people will think, they're like, oh, no, no, but I, 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 it's a practical application. And I'm like, yes, I understand that. I understand that. But like, th there's a real hard difference in here because of some of the things you miss by like graduating yourself to this level without being identified is what people do. Never will they, graduating to advanced and expert is like lies, for sure. Without, without like showing, it's a lie. Especially if you go and you expose the dashboard of any of these SaaS products, all this information that's there when you log in as the user, you can see how little they know. Like it's like, it's, it's just pulling the curtain in Oz. You just go log in and you go, Psh, and you're like, novice. <laughs> Sorry, like I mean, but you want to have that identified now so that you don't lose revenue and time. Like, just stop lying, you know? It'll do your business good. So when I said modern proficiency, right? And I was talking about remote departments. So let's go remote departments, which is just some phrasing that I came out came up with that it describes what the automated method does in terms of identifying a problem and having a service offering. So this is like basically outsourcing. However, if you do understand that SaaS products are designed to have administration from the outside as well as users, when you have a SaaS product, you will notice like, here's a good example in Squarespace. When you as an owner register for a Squarespace account, you put in your credit card, you put in your information, it's your space, your SaaS world, your little cloud inside the cloud. But you can add administrators or like web developers or whatever as people that are, they receive like a link to use the software that for, for you, right? But their way, 
that's like what you don't understand. So you can invite people into your ecosystem. Same with like QuickBooks Online. You register it all yourself if you did that. And then you put in the email address of your accountant. You put in the email address of your bookkeeper. You assign the permissions and now they are basically your remote departments. The SaaS product's always here in the cloud. What you're doing is you're just sending these logins and permissions, right? You're aligning people into this ecosystem via their email address. That's how all of these SaaS products work, right? You can build a team of people that are just all, all over the internet. So when I say remote departments, that's what I'm getting at, right? But the best part is to find that agency, or as we say over here, an agent, that handles that SaaS, that's app-centric, which is another, right? App-centric, these are all made up from my head, based on what we just talked about. So they're app-centric and they are going to be like expert proficient, so expert modern proficiency, okay, in that app, in that part of your business, in that SaaS product that you, A, thought you knew what you were doing with, B, don't do anything with anymore, C, sometimes log in, <laughs> I, I just go on and on and on, it's just, I, it's a, a need, there's a, there's a want and a need for this, people are totally 100% just wasting time in these products. I'd say the only one that any owners will dive bomb into full force, even, and, and by the way, not even use it correctly, but use it more than beginner, past fundamental, into some sort of morphed, mutated, expert advanced, would be QuickBooks. Whether it's the Windows installed version, Pro Premier, you know, Enterprise, or whether it's QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online is probably different in that regard, but the transition is a lot of QuickBooks is round peg, a square peg round hole to get to expert advanced because they weren't using another application. And this is where you can quote me on this because they're concerned about money, right? So they're concerned about AR and AP, accounts receivable and accounts payable, probably minusing the two and that's how they run a business. But what happens is it's so, they're so concerned, I'm just going to say greedy, but at the same time, they want their business to thrive and survive. So I get that, but it's hard to work with that. And, you know, greed always comes around. I get it, the green monster, but it, and it controls their business's finance, finances. Financials are super important. Why? Well, I mean, you can go bankrupt or have no money to pay your team. I get it, your staff. I totally understand. But like that... What happens is you just get so wrapped up in that one application that you don't think about the other ones. And you'll be, and then you'll be self-proclaimed an advanced or expert in the other ones, but you're not. And then because they're not doing, or you don't know of the other ones you should be using that integrate with, then you're going to build out other things inside it, like other roles and responsibilities the application is not designed for, will have in it now. Like in QuickBooks, there are way I've seen how it's set up, how it's run, how it is controlled inside it is forced and mutated because it, they should have other things like a CRM, right? They should have an application for project management instead of using the CRM. Uh, sorry, instead of using QuickBooks as a CRM, there you go. There's a lot. Instead of using QuickBooks as project management by looking at the financial data you know, instead of having some sort of task management connected to the actual job. See what I mean? That square peg round hole, QuickBooks is like, that's, that's a whole other talk. But that's why people, you know, think that they got everything under control. <laughs> so let's say if I was talking about this again, going here to the expert modern proficiency, right? Let's build yourself an app stack right now. Let's do it. Like, you know. Let's do an easy one, okay? So what's the first thing you wanna do if say, for example, you wanna build an app stack? So let's go build an app stack or like, it doesn't matter, choose an app stack, I don't care, whatever you want, okay? The first thing you wanna do is pick a nucleus. 
Okay, so that's where we come in. There's a different nucleus for all different industries. And a nucleus app is the application you want to train your whole team on the most, to pay attention to the most, to control information the most in your industry. That's it, okay? And usually it's a product that's popular because the popular ones are spending so much design R&D to like be the most popular nucleus. And so pick a nucleus is a chapter in my book. So let's say your nucleus is HubSpot. There are others, okay? And I'll be honest with you, I love hate relationship with this because I know the, there's other ones that do certain things, but when you're talking to every industry on the earth, you need to have something they can align with that isn't specific only to certain solutions for certain industries, okay? That's why I choose some of the ones I speak about a lot. My brand alignment is so that the advertising can be also educational. So this is like not just pigeonholing someone into like the e-commerce world, because e-commerce is not everything. There are so many other pieces to a business, you know, to a, to a e-commerce business, and there's also more, so many other industries that aren't e-commerce. You gotta look at that, right? So if you're going to pick your nucleus, it's HubSpot. Here's the deal. So of course, this is where you would have, this is your CRM. For the most part, a lot of businesses not properly using a CRM, haven't even heard of CRM, customer relationship management, whatever, client relationship management. The idea of it is, is that that's where you put the contact information for everybody that's connected with your business, you know, prospective clients, current clients, etc. So you can use this as like checking what someone's email address is, what is their phone number, when's the last time they were engaged, where are they in the sales pipeline, where have they been emailed, da, 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 da. that's what this is for and it's really easy. The UX of usually these apps that I choose as a nucleus means that that's the one that you can check often instead of your inbox in your email to figure out what the fuck is going on in your business, okay, usually. That's that one. And then, of course, you could have, I like to promote zero for finances. It's your accounting software, or QBO, but we'll go zero slash QBO. And chances are it's going to be QBO plus. We don't have to get into it, but that's just their, like, payroll, inclusive software, and other things. And then, say, for example, so there's your finances, there's your, your sales, and your email to some extent, right? I would say HubSpot. Some people might have MailChimp in there. That could be email, but I'm just gonna make it simple, right? And then you have your communication nucleus, which is either Microsoft Teams, and I'm gonna say right now, or Slack. Now, you could put Zoom in here, or you could put Google, like Hangouts Meet, whatever. They're lacking in connecting to the core tenancy of Google or Microsoft, right? That's why it's hard, and that's why a lot of people, I think, turn to Slack over Microsoft Teams because they're not in the Microsoft Team, Microsoft 365 environment. This is, I don't want to go off the rails on this one. I'm just going to be very simple here, right? So this is like how I would consider a business be built. Now, the best part is though, if you were to just put this as sales, like modern sales, right? Let's say, because someone will say it's marketing too. I'm like, okay, let's just concentrate on one thing at a time. And then here would be like modern finance, right? Which is, which is both accounting and bookkeeping. Now remember, that's what this word means. You can't just, you gotta make sure you understand accounting and bookkeeping, okay? That's like, that's finance. Microsoft Teams, and this will be like modern communication, okay? Modern comms, whatever, okay? That's this. Here's how, here's how interesting this gets. This, these right here, as an owner, become expert proficient in, really. Because like these things will talk to everything and your team. Communication is key, right? So Microsoft Teams or Slack, that's where you should be concentrating your efforts on, right? As far as like HubSpot, if you're doing modern sales, find a remote department to do sales management, sales pipeline management, right? So now you don't have to really worry about that. That's kind of outsourced. Your team can use it, but the majority 
of all the stuff that you're going to not be expert in. And that's what they're for, right? And then if you've got like zero or QuickBooks Online, we'll go, we'll go remote department to some sort of institution, an agency, an agent that is like a bookkeeping service cloud or like in a cloud accountant. There you go. Because you don't need to be expert proficient. There's someone else out there, another business out there that is. I'll have to do this a few times. I didn't want to go so automated method, you know, but you kind of have to, it all blends, right? I do want to have a talk about this in the future a lot, but that's like, that's only like a little bit, but look at how fast that was to figure out how to become modern proficient, you know, without like falsely declaring it, you know, like, as I always say, deflection. Deflection, because it's like you don't want to change, so you don't think it's going to be anything you need to do. And then the other reason is because, like, you've been so used to whatever it is you're doing that, like, it's, it's, it's a, you, you're scared to death of making these decisions. But that's why you want help, right? That's why you want help. And people would say that you could do that with hiring. But I'm going to say this, like, you'd have to hire so many people that are proficient in, like as a full-time salarized person that, that are as expert proficient that you want. And generally, finding someone that's like proficient in every single one of these application environments just for you is almost, it's close to zero as well. Okay? So we'll stop there.